On Monday, we talked about the backlash that Ron DeSantis received from queer conservatives following the release of his shamelessly bigoted ad that happened to feature yours truly for some reason. Now, in this ad, he attacked Trump for not being homophobic and transphobic enough. And as Brooke Migdon of The Hill explains, LGBTQ conservatives say they feel misled by Ron DeSantis after seeing that ad. And I mean, who could blame them? Right. If only he had given them some indication that he was homophobic or transphobic, then they could have been mentally prepared for this moment. But I mean, how could they have possibly known? They they must feel so blindsided. I'm sorry. <laughs> These people are not very bright. Um, anyways, he responded to criticism over that ad in an interview with Tommy Loren. And believe it or not, she is still around, although it got less than 4,000 views, which is very interesting to me. But in this interview where he responds to the backlash from the ad, he made one of the most outrageous statements about Donald Trump that I've ever heard. And Donald Trump is a lot of things, but he is not unequivocally not what Ron DeSantis characterizes him as in this particular video. There has been a little bit of backlash because late last week, the DeSantis War Room Twitter account put out a video attacking Donald Trump for, I guess, his advocacy for the LGBTQ community. And some people on the Trump side, and then, of course, the liberals, some people in between, they were pretty upset at that video. It, it features Caitlyn Jenner and, and other folks what do you say, what was the intent of that video? And it was not put out by you, but it was put out by an account linked to you. What's your response yeah, to look, all the I mean, I, I think, you know, identifying uh, Donald Trump as really being a pioneer in injecting gender ideology into the mainstream where he was having men compete against women in his beauty pageants. I think that's totally fair game because he's now campaigning saying the opposite. No, your ears are not deceiving you, my friend. Ron DeSantis, with a straight face, mind you, claimed that Trump is a pioneer of gender ideology. I don't I don't even know where to begin with that statement. I feel like I shouldn't have to debunk that. But he literally banned trans people from serving in the military. Yet DeSantis is trying to portray him as some sort of a fucking Harvey Milk to trans people. It's just honestly so stupid that that is the type of attack that Republican GOP candidates are engaging in. But the reason why we're revisiting this topic is not necessarily because I want to show you Ron DeSantis' response, although I had to because that was just incredibly gold, uh, but because the fallout from this ad has continued in gay conservative circles. So it started with Caitlyn Jenner calling out Gays Against Groomers leader Jamie Mitchell for being on DeSantis's payroll and calling on her to step down. Now, days later, Gays Against Groomers released a nine tweet thread where they attack Caitlyn Jenner for a range of reasons, um, starting with her getting sued for killing someone with her car, which is true. And then they also attack her for not returning her Woman of the Year award that Glamour magazine gave her as if that matters. And then they also attacked her for donating donating to LGBTQ plus charities and throughout the thread, they dead name and misgender her and gag founder, Jamie Mitchell also released a statement attacking Jenna, promoting the thread and calling her the biggest fraud in the movement and adding quote, it's pretty obvious why Jenna decided to attack me and gaze against groomers completely unprovoked the other day in a response to a tweet that mentioned neither of us. Jenner wants fairness first. That's Jenner's anti-trans pack, by the way, uh, fairness first to dethrone GAG as the leading organization fighting radical gender ideology. Well, I have some news for you, CJ. That's too damn bad, and it will never happen. But she may have spoken too soon because David Leatherwood, a gay conservative who's anti-trans, who held a board seat on Gays Against Groomers, announced that he is resigning from his position on the board of GAG and also withdrawing entirely from the organization altogether. But hilariously enough, Caitlyn Jenner responded to that and accused him of fence sitting writing not the draft you sent my team some highly relevant omitted information hmm you can't play it both ways now david leatherwood responded to that saying my departure from gag is directly related to the founder's outspoken support for desantis in light of his recent ad that is extremely anti-gay while i respect everyone's right to their own opinion the homophobia coming from the desantis campaign is not something i want to be affiliated with in any way even by proxy through gag. So in other words, he was fine with DeSantis attacking trans people, but DeSantis went a little bit too far when he came for the gays next, as if that wasn't 
predictable. Now, I already know what you're thinking, that this man is the poster boy for the person who voted for the leopards eating people's faces party, but he already addressed that in this pinned tweet where he contends, the leopard did not eat my face. I am the leopard. <laughs> Every time I see that photo, I can't not laugh at just how fucking lame and pathetic and cringeworthy these people are. But aside from Gag losing a board member, which is pretty significant, it is much, much worse than that. As LGBTQ Nation explains, as gay Republicans abandoned DeSantis in droves, the anti-LGBTQ plus right-wing hate group Gays Against Groomers, Gag, founded by Jamie Mitchell, has reportedly lost over 23 members following accusations that it's a Ron DeSantis AstroTurf organization. Meaning it's being funded by DeSantis while masquerading as grassroots. According to Ari Drennan, the LGBTQ program director for Media Matters, others who have left gag in the wake of the DeSantis revelations include the director of chapters, the director of operations, and the leader of the New York chapter. Hmm. So the organization is imploding as we speak. And I'm sorry, I, I'm still thinking about the leopard tweet. It's just so funny to me that with the acronym gag, I mean, this is a clown show. It's a train wreck that you can't look away from. Um, but the point is that the organization is seemingly imploding, and this astroturfed house of cards really was destined to fail at some point, considering that its founder, Jamie Mitchell, really doesn't seem to practice what she preaches. And let me tell you what I mean by that. So in a comprehensive write-up about gag by Media Matters, they detail Mitchell's promotion of fringe conspiracy theories like QAnon and Stop the Steal. But notably, they write, while lobbying these accusations at her political enemies, Mitchell posted a pro-Trump quote and picture from far-right figure Milo Yiannopoulos months after Yiannopoulos' 2016 comments supporting pedophilia came to light. But there's more. Leading up to the 2020 election, Mitchell had frequent online communications with Ali Alexander, the founder of the Stop the Steal movement that heavily pushed conspiracy theories about the 2020 presidential election. Mitchell would go on to be intimately involved in Alexander's movement, being listed alongside right-wing activist Alex Bruzewitz as a contact for the Stop the Steal rally in Wisconsin under her online account, The Gay Who Strayed. So let me get this straight. The supposed anti-grooming lady who is against the sexualization of kids promoted a man who literally advocated for the sexualization of children. I'm, of course, talking about Milo Yiannopoulos. Here's the tweet in question in case you were curious. And on top of that, someone who she organized with closely, Ali Alexander, we just learned, solicited explicit pictures from minors and literally sexually groomed them. Yet, after being called out repeatedly for her deafening silence, the only response that we presumably got from her about this was a tweet where she says, also, I am not friends with Ali Alexander, LOL. But is that it? That's all you have to say about Ali Alexander. Now, to be fair, maybe she denounced him extensively on a different platform, and I just haven't seen it. But that is the only mention of Ali Alexander that I could find since he was outed as a groomer from her. Now, you would think that she would be at least less flippant considering her supposed opposition towards grooming and not just be like, oh, I'm not friends with him, lol. But you worked with him extensively on the Stop the Steal campaign. That's a big deal, considering you are the anti-grooming lady and that person, who was your former colleague, turned out to be a literal groomer who stands in opposition to your entire movement. And your only response is, mm, he's not my friend. That's it. Now, again, I really, really hope I'm mistaken here and that she actually has denounced both Ali Alexander and Milo Yiannopoulos. But that tweet is still up, hence the screenshot that I took. It's just unreal. So I'm not sure how many people are left at Gays Against Groomers or GAG, which is uh, quite the interesting name, right? But they might want to re-examine their relationship with this organization. But here's what I will say. Even though I have absolutely no respect for any of these LGBTQ plus conservatives, I have to at least give them credit for being entertaining. They might be idiots, but they're entertaining idiots. So as long as they keep fighting each other specifically, 
I will keep watching because when you form a movement based on internalized homophobia and transphobia and bigotry and delusions of grandeur and being a pick me, that movement is bound to fail. And to even call it a movement is, I think, a little bit too charitable. And it seems like this is the beginning of the end of gag, although we'll have to wait and see, but we can only hope. Vagina. 